Ezekiel chapter 25 The word of the Lord came again unto me, saying, Son of man, set thy face against the Ammonites, and prophesied against them. Alright, here's a group of people God says, I'm not for. Why? And say unto the Ammonites, Hear the word of the Lord God. Thus saith the Lord God, because thou saidest. Now, Ezekiel is told to preach to a bunch of people that God doesn't like, who are not for God. Why do we go knocking on doors? Why do we go preaching on the street? Why do we give people gospel tracts? Why do we have an open Bible for people who don't want to have anything to do with God? Because God told you to go to them and tell them what, they say, what God has to say. Now everyone has a condemnation according to John chapter 3 of God. You're going to die and you're today you're going to die and burn in the lake of fire unless you believe in the Lord Jesus Christ. If we don't tell them that and we don't tell them what the answer is, we don't tell them what the way, the truth, and the life is, they're not going to know. Now Ezekiel's call here is to go tell these group of people, God has a problem with you. There may be a way for them to repent and get right. You need to read the book of Jonah. God was angry with a bunch of ill Gentiles, according to Jonah. And Jonah knew the mercy of God that if I go tell those people, they're going to get right and God's going to forgive them. Read Jonah. To this mean, wicked, nasty God, go tell the people you're going to hell. Don't preach hell. It's preach love of God rather than hell. What are you going to be saved from if you don't preach the truth? you got to have an object to be saved from. A lifeguard can't save someone from drowning in the parking lot. So here are a group of people that God's angry with, and he tells a man of God, go to them and tell them what I am saying. Because thou saidest, aha, against my sanctuary. Now what we're coming down is Genesis chapter 12, verse 3. I will curse them that curse you. Aha, look what happened to, to God's house over there. The temple. Ha ha, look at that. You mighty Jews, the God of, of the Jews. Look what's happening over there. When it was yeah. profane. When it was profane. How was it profane? The Gentiles are in it. There are being people killed there. And against the land of Israel. When it was desolate. And against the house of Judah when they went into captivity. This is a prophecy. The land, the temple has not been destroyed. And God says, I'm going to tell you how those people are going to act. When Jeremiah is released from prison, when he's writing Lamentations. I'm going to tell you what the Ammonites are going, going to do. When Babylon came in the third and final time, it was a rejoicing of the nations around them. Behold, therefore I will deliver thee to the men of the east for a possession. Who is it? The Ammonites. What is the context of Genesis 12, 3? I will curse them that curse you. I will bless them that bless you. In the very thought of your words. In the very reactions. You take that today. News. Tel Aviv. Jerusalem. Suicide bomber. Detonates bomb in a coffee shop. Oh, those Jews had it coming. Oh, they're always causing trouble. Blah, blah, blah. God says, you know what? I saw that aha. Uh -huh. And you're in trouble. Missiles fly into Jerusalem from whoever. 
10, 30 people are, are injured, three are dead. Oh, Lord God, they're your people. Lord, will you just send a missionary or somebody over there to tell them about their Messiah, the Lord Jesus Christ, so they can believe on him before they go off into a devil's hell, which they're, they're, they're your people. They're not supposed to go into a devil's hell. They are yours. We're to pray for the peace of Israel. God says, I, I love that blessing. So you better be careful what happiness you have over God's people. You be very, very careful. Because God said, I am angry with you just because you went, aha. You may, let me bring up another one. Let's, let's think about, and this, let's say sports, whatever kind of sports. You may not know he's a Jewish guy. And he's on the field and he falls down and, and, and injures his ankle for the ha ha, that's so good. I'm glad he's not playing anymore, blah blah blah. And he's one of God's people. Your whole aspect on how you treat that Jew, God tells you, you better be careful. Before behold, therefore I will deliver thee to the men of the east for a possession. And they shall set their palaces in thee, the Ammonite area, home. And they shall set their palaces in thee, and make their dwellings in thee. And they shall eat thy fruit, and they shall drink thy milk. In other words, they're going to come in and take away you. They're going to be replaced by somebody else. You know what happens to you when you cur curse the Jew? You're going to be replaced. And I will make Rabbah, a city in uh, the Ammonite, a stable for camels. I want to check these places today what they are. And the Ammonites, a couching place for flocks. And ye shall know that I am the Lord. A resting place for the goats, for the sheep. But they're not going to be Ammonite sheep. They're not going to be a camels of the Ammonites. They're going to be camels and sheep and goats for other people. They may be your sheep and goats and camels. For thus saith the Lord God, Zephaniah 2.15, Because thou hast clapped thy hands, and stamped with the, feet, with the feet, and rejoice in heart with all thy despite against the land of Israel. So when you see somebody rejoicing because some they, something has happened to the Jew or the land, you better shake your head at that person. Isn't it good what happened over there in Israel? Buddy, get away from me. You know, when somebody starts talking like that, you, you, yeah, I'm all for separation. But let me tell you something. I mean, if you want to be with family, friends, and co-workers and all that, people don't love the Lord Jesus, that, that, okay, fine. That's between you and God. But if you know somebody who outwardly rebukes and makes fun of that Jew in any way, you definitely need to get away from that person. Anti-Semitic people, the KKK, you got to get away from them. Nazism. Because, because you may be part in reaction to what they're doing. You say, what are you saying? Let's say you know somebody that, that does that kind of thing. God may call you to that friend of yours. Why don't you just go tell him what the Bible says about those people? Are you going to be really want to do that? I'll be, I'll, be, I'll be a missionary somewhere in the world and you won't be able to tell your friend who's a skinhead what the Bible really says about the Jews. And ACP and all that. As a born-again Bible-believing Christian, Paul tells us in the New Testament, you better pray for Israel. Now, I'm told by my pastor that Israel will not allow Bible missionaries over there. Bible-believing missionaries. They're forbidden. But there is a person, and probably a lot of persons, who go over there and can work with them, and if you don't know who they are, and don't find out who they are, because if they find out, the government will find out, and give them, 
and say, Lord, you know, you know where your people are that are working for the Jews. I don't know who they are. You know, a prayer for them will be just as much as five dollars. Because what do you think happens to the Lord Jesus Christ when he says, they're my brethren? What do you think happens to God when he called them out? If one of them people of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob were to call on Jesus Christ as their Messiah, I think that'd be well pleasing. And if it was just because you prayed, we are seeing somebody who prays against, who is happy against. And there are people out there and there are religions that say God's all finished with Behold, therefore I will stretch out my hand upon thee and will deliver thee for a spoil to the heathen. And I will cut thee off from the people. And I will cause thee to perish out of the country. I will destroy thee and thou shalt know that I am the Lord. And I keep talking about this when this comes up. That you shall know that I am the Lord. It is the wrong time for, for Jesus Christ to tell you to depart from me, you workers of iniquity, to know the Lord. We watched a couple videos with Mormons. It is very wrong to realize that the Jesus Christ that did not show up in America that did not condone marrying all these women, and that did not condone having spiritual babies, that realize that he'd be standing, and he'd be sitting in front of you while you're standing, and he tells you to go off in the lake of fire. That's the wrong time to know that I am the Lord, and you had the wrong one. Because when you are cast off in the lake of fire, that is it. The judgment is closed. There are no more books open. At least when you go into hell, maybe the books are open. Those that were found written in the Lamb's Book of Life, get on to. There are saved people in the great white throne judgment. But when you are cast off in the lake of fire, that is the wrong time to finally know that I am the Lord. And look what happens. Just, listen, he spares some Israelites a remnant. There is no sparing. Thus saith the Lord God, because the Mo, because that Moab and Seir do say, Behold, the house of Judah is like unto all the heathen. They're just like us. What's wrong with that? Therefore, therefore behold, I, God, will open the side of Moab from the cities, from his cities, which are on the frontiers, the glory of the country, Beth Jehemeth, Baal, me, meow, meow, God of the meow, I guess, and Kurathium, these are cities in Moab, unto the men of the east with the Ammonites, the ones we just read about, that the Ammonites may not be remembered among the nations. And I will execute judgment upon Moab, and they shall know that I am the Lord. Just say, hey, look, they're just like us. They're no better than the Gentiles. They were to be better than the Gentiles. And you know what? It was true. The Jews were acting like the heathen. They were worse. Shut your mouth and pray for them to get right. Those Jews are money. You just need to be careful. Need to be careful. God loves them. Thus saith the Lord God, because that Edom, Moab and Edom are the children of the daughters of Lot by their father. Now you want to know more about Edom than this? You study the book of Obadiah. You say, what part of Obadiah? The entire book is about the Edomites and what they do to the Jews at the final captivity of Babylon. There were Jews that were running and got away from Babylon. And when the Edomites found them, they caught them and sold them or gave them over to the Babylonian army. Or they prevented them from running out of Israel. 
and study the book of Obadiah, and we'll get there, Lord willing, one day. Edom has dwelt against the house of Judah by taking vengeance. What's the vengeance? That was my birthright. No, I'm not. Yeah, Edom, Esau. That's not the child of. I'm wrong in that. That's not the child of Lot. That's the. That's Esau. That's Jacob's brother. Moab and Ammon were the children of Lot's daughters by Lot. Forgive me on that. Edom is Esau, Jacob's brother. What is the vengeance? That was my birthright. Well, Esau did sell it, didn't he? God did give Jacob, in a roundabout kind of way, but God had would have given it to Jacob in a righteous way had not Mama and Son got together and deceived Daddy. But and it, it's quite funny because... Let's see, just look here real quick. I don't want to take too much time. But, um, oh, we'll open right to it. Thank you, Lord. Genesis 27 is recorded 1760 BC. 590 BC, uh, just a quick little, 1,200 years. Some of you can take, I'm not that good math in my head. 1,200 years, and they are still angry and soaking over that lost blessing that their father sold out for. Had their father done right and not sold it, we would be reading about the Edomites and not the Jacobites, whatever you want to call it. Israelites. So why did they fight against Israel with Babylon? Because that's our blessing. You stole it from Grandpa. And have greatly offended and revenged himself upon them. It was revenge when you go to Obadiah that day. Uh uh, you're not coming to our land. Ha, got one. Uh, Mr. Babylonian man, come here. Look what I got over here. What do you got? Oh, you got a Jewish family. Now you mark this when Jesus Christ separates the nations by goats and sheep. What do you think Edom's going to be? They're going to be a goat nation. Go over Matthew and read that. You know, when you as a nation to get acceptance into the millennium, after the seven year tribulation period, how do you get into the, the millennium as a nation? Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, thou shalt be saved? No. Nope. By the works of the law? Yes. That's it? No. Nope. A Gentile nation after the seven year tribulation period, in order to get into the millennium, it is your conduct on how you treated that Jew. Edom won't get through. Therefore, thus saith the Lord God, I will also stretch out my hand upon Edom. You better watch out when God stretches out his hand. This is the God of the Old Testament. When Jesus Christ struck out his hand, he usually healed. And will cut off man and beast from it. And I will make it desolate from Teman, a city in, in uh, Edom. And they of Dedan shall fall by the sword. War. And I will lay my vengeance upon Edom by the hand of my people Israel. All right. You want vengeance upon Jews? They're going to get their vengeance. And what's the law of Galatians 6, 7? Be not deceived. God is not marked. Whatsoever man soweth, that he shall also reap. And when you plant one tomato seed, how many tomatoes do you get? Plant one, one corn kernel on the ground and see how many corn kernels you get. Not ears, corn kernels on one stalk. And they shall do in Edom according to my anger and according to my fury. And they shall know my vengeance. 
It doesn't say, and they shall know I am the Lord. They shall know my vengeance. God has an anger against Edom. Why? He sold that birthright which God would have given him. It was God's. So, Christian, how angry do you give do you get God when you set when you sell out what you're supposed to do for God for a job? For a wife, for a husband, for a son, for a daughter, for an in-law, for a grandma. I can just keep on going. What did Esau sell his birthright out for? Gold, silver, palace, land? Satan stood before Jesus Christ. If thou shalt fall down and worship me, I will give you. Is that what Esau did? No, he sold out for a pot of beans. And when I used to do that particular island and store that I work at, I look at that little bag of beans. I'm like, that's it? I don't even like, imagine, it wouldn't be funny if he didn't even like the beans, because I don't, I like green beans, but those kind of beans, I don't like. But I'm just, I'm going to die, I'm so hungry. Uh, and he did sell it. Saith the Lord God. And it all, it says, therefore I stretch out my hand upon Eden, and will cut off man and beast. Where is it? I will lay my vengeance upon Edom by the hand of my, he's going to have Israel do it. Israel is going to kick Edom's butt. God says, I'm not even going to waste time with other nations. I'm going to let my people do it back to them. Thus saith the Lord God, because the Philistines, we haven't seen them in a while. We thought they were being good, didn't you? Had dwelt by revenge. And have taken vengeance with a despiteful heart. To destroy it from the old hatred. What's the old hatred? What was all the battles between Saul and the Philistines and David and the Philistines? They wanted that land. They got stuck with this little tiny chunk along the Mediterranean Sea. Therefore, thus saith the Lord God, Behold, I will stretch out my hand upon the Philistines. And will cut off the Sherathims, whatever how you say it, and destroy the remnant of the of the sea coast. I will execute great vengeance upon them with furious rebukes. And they shall know that I am the Lord. Edom didn't get that condemnation, and then they shall know I am the Lord. <laughs> Forget it. We've had three nations here. We've had Ammon, Moab, Edom, and now Philistines, the fourth nation. Three of them get, and you shall know that I am the Lord, and one didn't. Guess who God's really most angry at? And Moab and Ammon, and usually my wife helps me with this one, they are family too. Lot was Abraham's nephew. So the girls' boys would have been cousins, I think, of Abraham. And you go family relations from there. I have no idea. But Lot was Abraham's father's brother, son. Figure it out. I don't get those things. Yeah. Philistines. And the boys that came from his incestuous relationship with his daughters would have been cousins. great nephews. Great nephews? Something like that. So when you come up where they are now, Philistines were a bunch of Hamites. From Noah that marched their way down to Africa and stuck. Oh, I, was, I like this right here. They never went fully into their land. When I shall lay my vengeance upon them. So he's got vengeance upon two of the four nations Edom and the Philistines. So when you read your Bible, Israel is the top nation. How to treat the Jew? Study Ammon. Study Moab. Study Philistines on how 
not to treat the Jews. And you'll be okay as a nation. As a nation, if you were to start a new nation today and say, we're going to live for Jesus Christ, we're going to live for the Bible, and we understand that the Israelites are God's people, amen, glory to that, we're going to help them every way. How shall we do it? All right, Moab, Edom, Ammonites, Philistines, our enemy. Whatever they did to Israel, we're going to do the opposite. How's that sound? And I don't think ever once, you know, I, I, maybe the Moabites, I'm not sure, has ever allied with the Jews. No, I said that. I open up my mouth. I may open up to it. Yeah, I'll admit when I'm wrong. When I'm wrong a lot. But I don't think Edom ever helped them out. I don't think the Philistines have ever helped them out. So God is angry with groups of people. He is angry with nations. And he does not love them. And he's going to destroy them on the, the basis of the conduct of how they treat his children. Now, isn't that a protection of the Father, God the Father? Now, however it was, let me get it down as we close. One day a man named Saul who was of the strictest of the sects of the strictest sects of, of Israel, Philistine, he's going to Damascus one day. Whether walk, whatever, I don't know how he did it. But he's on his way to Damascus, and he's knocked to the ground. It's great light. And he has a talk with the Lord Jesus Christ. An interesting little talk. Now see, I am a child of God by the Holy Spirit and the adoption of God the Father by the Lord Jesus Christ. I am God's son. I am not of my old father, Satan, John 8, 44. God adopted me to be his son. So when Saul got knocked down, Jesus said to him, a few words, and Saul, and Saul said, Who art thou? And Jesus said a remarkable word, I am Jesus whom thou persecutest. Nowhere did you read Paul doing anything to the Lord Jesus Christ. Nowhere. And he tells his testimony at least two to three times. Nowhere does he say he beat Jesus. Nowhere did it say he spit upon Jesus. Nowhere is it said that he handed the nails for Jesus. But he did something. He killed. He put in prison. He bounded Christians all over the place. He persecuted the Christians. And Jesus said, I am Jesus, whom thou persecuted. When you persecute a child of God, God takes it personally. He didn't say, Paul, the church that you persecuted. You persecuted me. I don't need to worry about, oh, you know, I'm going to go get my brother. I'll just go get my father. You can do whatever you want to me if I tell you about Jesus. You're not doing it to me. You're doing it to God. And Jesus said, marvel not the world hates you. Know it, it hated me first. I'm going to give you a warning. And if by chance this gets into any governmental hands, whether Yay or nay, whether you're going to use it to persecute me, kill me, or use it to believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, amen. But let me give you a warning if this has come to the hands of a nation leadership. You better treat that Jew with respect, with honor, and with glory if you expect anything good from God the Father. The moment you even say, uh, look at the Jew, they're in trouble. 
or look at them they're just like us or stop you ain't coming here or mr. Babylonian I got a Jew over here what will you get nothing all right just take them or we're just gonna war after them years after years after years after years we're just gonna give them a hard time we're just gonna have battles with them left and right and God says I'll raise my hand to you now there have been people who made fun of the Jews the media they're in trouble there are people who say they're just like us churches I mean religious religions maybe Baptist churches too you are in trouble God says I will execute judgments I hate them Jews I'm going to kill them Jews I am going to get rid of those Jews Nazi Germany Adolf Hitler God he doesn't say I'm going to, I'm going to let the Jews get, take, take over you you know Jewish people picked up some of the German names and some of the German names today are living by the Jews some of those last names of Jewish people are not their last names. They adopted German names. And then, I'm just going to have wars with you over and over and over and over and over just to give you a hard time and get your land. Uh, the Catholic Church, the, Phyllis, the, the PLO. And God says, I'm going to raise my hand over you. And one day you shall know that I am the Lord. How? There'll be one people gathered under the Lord Jesus Christ in the millennium as God's people. Christians and the Jewish. Your conduct is, go back to Genesis chapter 12, read verse 3. I will curse them that curse you. And I will bless them that bless you. Now, earlier in my Christian walk, I would say, you know, you, you would... Some Jewish jokes are funny. But studying this passage here, even if it's a good, clean, nothing wrong, nothing provokes Jewish joke, I wouldn't say it. Because there are some nations here that all they did is just say some things and God got angry. Now, would I go so far as right now to ask God to put under the blood of any Jewish joke I ever told? After reading these passages, I ask God to exactly do that. You may not feel so strong, but may the Lord help me not ever to tell a Jewish joke again and take it with all seriously instead of telling a joke, praying for them. Because if I read my Bible correct in the attorney, there's going to be a lot of Jews. <laughs> Not many Germans, not many Nazis, not many KKK, not many people who have been against the Jews, but there'll be a lot more Jews. And Jesus Christ is a Jew.